Welcome back, and thanks for sticking around. As mentioned prior to the break, Europe is qualified, Brazil is qualified, but we still got some teams from North America to punch their way through. I'm still Dolson, still hanging out with Gormizer for the first set of NA. No one ever would have known I was over here. Why is that? There's no no clips, no anything. It was all a mystery. Oh, wait, right. I think I blanked whatever that was out of my memory just a few moments ago. And you just figured out the secret to how my marriage is so happy. Katie does that to everything that I do. No, it's all the, the beautiful tweets that we see on our timeline from you guys. Group A and Group B on your screen now. This one, I think, uh, I hesitate to call it the opposite of Brazil, but I think there are multiple teams with a lot of names in NA that you would recognize going yeah. into this group stage. It's going to be weird having some of those names left out. Especially when you look at how scattered, again, a lot of like PPL players, when they separated looking for the online league, have ended up on a bunch of different mm -hmm. teams. A lot of people are looking at Invocal and the Idiots as kind of the powerhouse Kings. in this region. Ed said Idiots on oh, the thing. Oh, did it say Idiots so still? So it's <laughs> Idiots still. And plus, you know, Got the it. accurate descriptors where, where they're needed, you know. And Invocal <laughs> and the Kings... I don't know. They if weren't that's happy true. about it. They weren't thrilled on that one. Uh, but this first matchup we have here in NA, uh, Brimey's Fan Club versus the full name. <clears throat> all right, here we go. HP Office Jet Pro 6978 Wireless All in One Instant Ink Ready Printer. And where can I find that online? And for how much? Beats me. I actually I do no need idea. a printer. N no jokes. Well, I, that's a complete this, aside. This is but. truth in advertising here. This is how it works. Some names you would recognize on both teams. HP Office Jet Pro, Mage Monkey, frontlining for them with Fishnet, Penguin, Raukion, and Quashi as their next four. Those are some names that you expect to carry a big yeah, performance. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Raukion's going to do today, but Mage Monkey is probably the big, I don't want to say decider, but a big impact player that comes sure. through for the team. A lot that is going to focus around those two that could potentially poke them forward mm -hmm. or could fall apart. You got Ice Mines and Waters Gate both. Thank God, get them out of there. <laughs> What's wrong with I don't want any more ice Waters Gate, Bizarre and Shattered Desert. No, I want to see Bizarre. Come on, yeah, guys. We'll go, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Frog Isle is where we are going to head for map number one. Uh, Brimey's Fan Club, they're composed of Cool Breeze, Betty, Su Chan, uh, Saloran, and Wiz Dude is their roster there. So still some names that I recognize throughout the scene and a team that I think could put up maybe some big points here up against HP Office Jet Pro, but I still think that HP Office Jet Pro are your favorites maybe in this one. Yeah, I just, uh, the HP Office Jet Pro, the full name. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's never going to be something I can get over, I think. But <laughs> they're going to be, in my eyes, they have a lot of pushing power, I guess yeah. is the best way to word it, because of the, the experience they have competitively that they're going to be bringing forward with it. And Frog Isle has been a very interesting one, because again, I hear Raukion, I, for immediately my mind goes to Leon, but I also think of the snipers. Knessa's banned, Strix is available. He That's might right. be worth first picking here. It could be worth picking up here if you're HP Office Jet Pro. Have seen some weirdness, yeah. though. I mean, it, it was mainly in Brazil, the two sets that we saw there. I mean, remiss if we don't mention the Moji for the 15th time Last on Frog Isle, but words. for a good reason, because you don't often see Moji there. But then also Stripping the Dredge the that had a it massive perished. amount of damage on that map. But that was a very kind of Brazil-centric meta that yes. we were seeing. Strix, though, back to some normalcy. First pick overall. And Maeve makes sense to me here as well. I, again, it's there's it's an odd yet. map when you have to choose a flank because there's, I would argue, maybe three. You could right. look at I four depending on where you want to go for that are solid on Frog Isle. Eevee comes to mind. Maeve comes to mind. Zen come to mind are the first three that Wave I'm going to rattle Gibbs off. Is done. And Maeve, again, with how much I like Midnight, I just mentioned it in the last game. I think she brings a lot of potency, Time not only for herself, charge. but for the Atlas and the Strix. I think it works from the top down here. Oh, well, Atlas is going to be snatched up one more time, this time over in NA. Terminus still continuing kind of that yep. war path back into the meta here. Back to basics. HP Office Jet Bro are going to like it with Koga rounding out BFC's draft. Terminus is a good anti-Anara. That's one of the things sure. he brings to the table that I like. It isn't a one-to-one -one, like, oh, I'm going to counter you, but it's just I can put up with you and you can put up with me, but I will win this fight eventually. Well, it's HP Office Jet Pro versus Brimey's Fan Club. Match number one in NA. Let's go. Well, yet again, we move into Frog Isle with only one sniper to speak of. It will be the Strix on the office jet side that will go largely unchecked here in this match. It's Finch and Kresnik as we are indeed about to move into Bribing Fan Clubs versus Office Jet. And do you think that's one 
area to kind of hone in on, or, or what are you really looking at? Is it this last pick, Koga, that just came in? What are you kind of honing in on here? Look, I mean, the Koga's just going to play on the side and do the, the Koga thing of just surviving while harassing. I'm worried about how these tanks are going to perform with just a Genos healing them. It's a Nara and Barrack. We know Barrack is paired very well with Genos, but those are two point tanks. You're putting one in the off lane, and they're both right. going to demand a lot of healing. That's not really what Genos brings to your team. You're right. Genos is going to definitely keep one person topped off and apply the damage, but the big crowd healing, not so much his forte as this early fight in favor of Office Jet Pro so far, already 42% to their favor and decent positioning as well. Looks like Anara is the one they'll be putting on most of the actual point duty, and they'll have this Barrett come off to do more of an off-tank type role here for them. Wiz Dude on the Koga so far, winning this matchup at the Mave, keeping him out, but look at the percent, Kresnik. So far, Office Jet have gone largely uncontested. They got 84 racked up already, and finally, a little bit of contestation coming out. They're trying to be really careful with their health pool because of the Genos healing, that's why. <laughs> Nursed Atlas damage show there, and Wiz Dude barely gets away with that Koga, but they just don't want to throw their health pool away. They're going to have to overtime. now, but Overtime gave them a shot. First, First blood. blood comes out in favor, though, of Rhyming's fan club. It's a double kill for this Barrack, who was able to find two. A third one coming into the kill feed now as Rhyming's fan club finally comes to life. The Strix, the only one still standing, has to fall all the way back. And despite giving up 99% here before Overtime even really came through, Rhyming's fan club now has a chance to potentially get this cap. They're in decent positioning to force them back. One benefit to their comp, too, is that these are these are tanks that can hold down space really well, and zoning is going to be a lot easier, I think, with that composition, but Flash they're going to have to stop that Mave while they're blinded by the flashback. It's going to be difficult to try and slow her down. Surchon on this Barrack is the one that's up front trying to slow them down, but Brimey's fan club have built the percentage all the way up to 99%. Another kill for this Barrack. Clearly comfortable playing it here in this role. Another kill for the victor now as well as the kill feed is only lit up in favor of BFC so far. It's just the tournament is left, Stop and Brimey's fan way. club get the cap. It was a great play by them at the end, syncing up their ultimates, Bur doing so much damage, it just burned straight through the Ying's healing. And I want to say, watching Seer play Barrack, it's so fun. He's, he's such a flexible player. It's so fun yeah. seeing him play all these different roles. He used to be a blaster main when his name was Eat Your Broccoli. Then he played support for a little bit. Now he's back on tanks after playing off tank in the past. It's just cool to see him flex around and, and be on a team that clearly is willing to be aggressive with him right now, locking down this left side with a dome. Yeah, and look at this Barrack playing so aggressively. No wonder he's a bit willing to use that ultimate freely. It's because he's building up percent actually decently fast so far and should have another one before too long here at this point. They're well over half pushed in so far, but Penguin finally shuts down this Barrack who's bought so much space for the rest of the squad. You can tell from BFC that that means retreat here for them. They really needed that midnight coming out as well as HP Office Jet consider getting aggressive, but a full retreat from BFC. Honestly, I mean, the retreat's not good, but that midnight getting used is not great for HP Office Jet. Yeah, did they, they know how full of retreat it was? Like, yeah, I mean, they, they got, what, a staggering Inara on the point who they didn't even stagger, they just killed her? I don't know, not too much value out of that, but they do have everything else. And, Raukion on the Strix. I, I find it interesting that he's running crack shot as well. No headshots at all yeah. on his rifle now because of that. So his burst damage isn't there, but he'll get himself a lot more information. Not really in a lot of sniper duels though. That's where crack shot kind of comes in its own. And there's only a victor on the other side for that backline duel. Well, BFC have another full minute with which to push this payload and see if they can make anything happen. The Barrack continues to be aggressive, but immediately sent back by the Atlas, who says hello. Not going to let him roll in quite that easily using the dash, but the payload continues to move. Finally, the Terminus, Terminus able to get in a position to stop this. And look how many of them have followed up on this left side around that shield from this Barrack. He really is setting up for the whole team to move with him. They are distracted, but look how much damage Coolbreeze took on the right side. He needs to get rehealed, and they're trying to engage with the other tank being ready. Barrack has yet another another shield down, but he gets caught this time. Penguin on the Mave is able to catch him out. Penguin with the doubles. He takes down Wiz Dude as well, getting rid of two of the critical flankers here for Brimey's fan club. And that's twice now after a dominant, really, first cap where they were able to come back and run through that 100% that this push has not worked. Yeah, it's tough. This is not a pushing composition right. on the side so of the they, they can. It's a Nara Barrack. Barrack can hold that zone on the side. He's doing a great job of that, but actually making that room is very difficult for them, but seems like the Sonara might have made enough. Barely gets in in time to get the touch to keep that overtime ticking down. Barrett continues to flank on the side with the Koga here to try and help out, but no ultimate available to him. They get Penguin 
pushed all the way back, but they still have a good amount of work to do if they want to actually cap this payload. And even if they don't, Office Jet have a ton of ultimates lined up to help them out. Victor trying to get multiple people into the sites to find more shots here at this point, but the defense proving stalwart up until this point. Finally, Fishnet ends up going down. That's a kill for Wiz Dude, but they did lose their Barrack already. Gonna be difficult to get the push from here. They end up losing the Koga as well. Betty does find one kill, but this should be enough for Office Jet to hold on. Uh, it's possible. They're getting poked on the side, but finally the Strix does get the last shot. And Wizdude, I think, was playing pretty well on the Koga until that, that last moment when he no. tried to run it down. Yeah. That that push, that overtime push, only happened because of Cool Breeze. He juggled his cooldowns perfectly on the objective, getting two walls in the time that he was taking all the pressure from everybody else. So, great on him, but the hold came down to Penguin perfectly guiding Wizdude. He yeah. had some ring around the rosy right outside of the spawn doors just to bait that Koga in for the kill. And Point interesting, against a king, seconds. he starts Haven. I guess that's just trying to slightly shore up some of Koga's weaknesses by getting that Haven to that burst damage, maybe not as much of an issue. And clearly Penguin Five, thinks that Maeve has the four, same weakness starting three, identically on the other two, side. You're right, both of one. these flankers have been worried about some of this some of this damage coming in from the opposite side, and it's helped them both so far. We'll see who comes out on top between Wiz Dude and Penguin. I think we saw Rolfian was up at the top in terms of player damage. I don't know, it hadn't felt as though he'd been tremendously impactful, but this Strix has been putting the damage numbers out at least here so far, so maybe a little bit by BFC needs to be done to make sure they're not taking too much fire from this Strix here so far has had a good game. They've been scaling the rest of the damage really well. Okay. And a huge Cyclone Strike, there's no second chance. Bonska can't escape. Able to take the Atlas out very early on. It's predicted that it ends up getting the kill credit for it, but Grimey's fan club right back in it. And remember how this last one started. It was HP Office Jet that built up a bunch of percent first, and then Brimey's fan club snatched it back from them, and they were the ones that got that initial cap. So neither one of these teams really have a long-term claim to this. It'll be a long, drawn-out fight as the Terminus makes his way in to contest the Inara. But it's the fight over on the left, where once again, willing to commit the Dome Shield on the left side flank is this Barrack, forcing back multiple members all by himself. Sir is an immovable object, but the other side is a very stoppable force because they just can't <laughs> burst through him with this dome shield, all this ultimate that he's gaining. They win the fight in main, but still Sir just can't go down. And they do finally get this kill into the bear to take him out. And the midpoint control has favored HP Office Jet. They've built that percentage up now to about 90%. I don't know that BFC is going to be able to get in there. They've got the NR nearby, but she's being pushed off the point. Betty has fallen as well as Rockin gets the kill. Mage Monkey finds one of his own. The overtime starting to tick now and desperately trying to see if they can get even one person on. The Barrack makes it in. He's been flanking all game, but now here he is trying to keep this actual main point on. They force him back. He gets in just in time to keep the overtime ticking and finally ends up falling. Yeah, the dome shield being used on the flank was great for that flank pressure, but that's also kind of hoping and praying that you win the fight on the other side of the map. If right. you lose it, then the later fights are a lot tougher. This is going to be a tough push for both teams. Just trying to, one side trying to go through double point tank with a victor back in the map. On the other side, your double point tank can't push. So either it's going to be just tough for either team to get a conversion here. It is, and I think the reason this barrack has been willing to commit resources to the barrage comes out from the victor, does find some good damage to the backline of fish but not the kill, is because he's giving his team multiple number advantages on these other fights, and they still have not quite been able to win them so far. So probably some frustration as the payload now already over halfway to its eventual end point. But a big wipe here from BFC. They found three kills. Should slow down this push from Office Jet. And hopefully they push forward a little bit and seeing the Inara walk in, it's going to be what they want to do, locking them down in this choke point precisely. This is where they want to be. They don't want to go too far forward, they just want to hold them in two strict choke points because that's what their their tanks are going to do. They're going to do that until their health goes down slowly while they're getting pocketed by this Genos. BFC way up on the other side of the map now, past the midpoint, huge damage on the Koga, ends up landing onto the main, but they don't find the kill proper, so some more ground being given back over to the side of Office Jet, even with all the strong healing coming out from Betty on the Genos here so far. It's actually a full retreat from BFC. The ground earned back instantly through time and space. It's not quite fine what I think Betty might have been looking for, so Office Jet keep up the pressure. That was actually a crazy setback from Washi there, hitting it on the rock right next to the barrack. Didn't end up in a kill, but still that CC might have forced out some cooldowns like this Tome Shield coming in now. He's willing to use on these flanks every single time to try and stall that push. He does so yet again to force them back. The victor reigning into the damage onto the Terminus. Is Anara now able to win the fight much better as a result of it? And this push has stalled from off the step. They cannot find a way to break through. Like you said, if BFC's team is just beefy, I don't know how you get through it. It's going to have to be later in the game, I think, maybe once they have more right. Wrecker, more cauterized to be able to get rid of some of these things. But 
You gotta just wait out Koga's energy or burst him at once, and Kot's not gonna help with that at all. Moving in aggressively, Koga dropping the ultimate, and I don't know if this Atlas can make it back out of it. Penguin does get one kill on the barrack, though, at the very least. And now the ultimate from Rolke, he wants a bit more here as well. Snipe comes, but not enough to actually get the kill. Off his jet still wanna try and make this push happen. Yeah, and the Strix is going to be putting on a lot of pressure. They have to get on him now, but again, they don't have a great pushing team, and they're all just being completely shoved in their spawn. They have been shoved all the way back. Rhyming's fan club's defense has been stifling up until now, and we could very easily be looking at getting another 2-2, but look how far the payload has managed to get pushed on this last one. Office Jet really do have a chance to close this one out if they can find a couple more of the kills. Willie to come in ultimates here, too, to try and make this push happen as Rhyming's fan club falls even further back. Fishing is charging ult after ult on the objective. Yeah, These illusory yeah. rifts are happening every two seconds, and it's been crucial to them capping this. Overtime still ticking, but remember, the longer that they're in overtime, the faster that it goes down once they're off the actual point. Cool Breeze now stepping in to try and be that last defense. Wizdude gets one, but they end up losing the, the victor on the backside of it, too. And now another kill here for this Barrack, make it a third, and that should be it here for the pusher office jet. They've lost so much on this push. The tournament is just trying to buy them time. Mage Monkey goes down, and another successful defense. Honestly, Mage might have wanted to give that up. Betty Clutch there catching out Quashi on the side, getting the Atlas between his cooldowns there makes it a lot tougher, but plus the healing on the tanks to keep them alive. But at that point, they lose him. Once they lose one more, maybe you just give up. A bunch of ultimates had to get used on the side of Brimey Fan Club, and how long that fight was, look how much they've recharged. I mean, Betty got the initial pick in that very, very final fight. She's already at 33%. On the next through time and space, it could easily come up during this fight, depending on how long and kind of drawn out it ends up becoming. Deathwise, they're doing a pretty good job at playing around their Geno's heal, so I wouldn't be shocked to see it go long and see another one come in, especially with morale boost too. You're exactly right, man. Betty has been so patient in these back lines and not been under very much pressure at all, as evident my long streak that Betty's currently on here at this point. So Brimey's fan club now in position so they can win yet another one of these point fights. But as you mentioned, I wonder if time is kind of their enemy. Once more of these sort of wreckers and cauterize and those sort of things come on, they should be able to chew through these tanks that much easier. As Midnight expended now by Penguin goes right to the back line, looking for Strix, but can't find him. That's huge. That Cool Breeze able to be there to play the defense there for him. Penguin ends up falling and they keep the Strix alive. Cool Breeze doesn't hit that. This fight's already over and you can see over Overwhelming pressure from these double point oh, yeah. tanks. And the Wiz dude is already trying to run in and spawn camp Ralkion, but Ralkion does not go down. He's still alive here. Keeping them undercover, but look at all this pressure they've already taken. I love the idea from Office Jet, though, man. That was an aggressive play around that midnight to try and get to the back line. There was just nothing doing better. Good defense, better offense, though, on the side of Brimey's, man. They hold them at bay. Now 63% in favor, sitting on top of this point. But Office Jet are right back in with another chance to try and win this fight. The Terminus is there. Saloran, though, has been locked out by this Atlas from long range, but there were no shots coming in. He just kind of takes the brunt of it, and he's right back ready to shoot. That's because of the pressure from Sirochan. He's so deep in on the side, and he gets away alive while trading out Penguin. He's able to get one kill. Wizdude finds one to Penguin there as well, and this is now finally a good fight for Brimey's fan club. They're at 84% and pushing back the remaining members of Office. Jadrokian ends up falling as well. That's the snipe down. A double kill now for Wizdude as he takes care of Fishnet as well, and this will indeed be a mid cap though. Terminus is back in with them willing to commit. Overtime. Looks like that reanimate, but the overtime ticking down now, and BFC should have it. Yeah, especially with Wizdude right here. It's so hard to fight a Koga with that damage that they had. I want to say, Bon Scott, Quashi has had such good mechanics on this Atlas. The way he's been placing his shields, the setbacks I've seen, plus that jumping exile behind the wall to catch the victor. Crazy. The team didn't clean up on it because of Siru pressuring on the danger side, but. That, this is stuff that you don't normally see from Atlas players. It's crazy that he's able to pull that out on a character that's kind of fallen out of the meta. You're right, I man. I saw the victor was clearly controlled. I'm like, where is this Atlas that hit him? He was way back there. What a nasty shot he was able to find. Now BFC in full aggression mode. Two minutes still ticking on the clock. They were already halfway through. But this is where the stall has come through for both of these teams so far. This last choke point has been so difficult for these teams to get past. But look how much they're controlling on the left-hand side. Rockin finds a kill. They catch the Terminus in midair, trying to find a way to crash back down, but this fight has been all office jet. The kill feed lighting up in their favor as they push back BFC. I'll see if Betty doesn't make it out, there could be some kills gained, but she just make it out preserving the streak, not giving that bonus to the enemy's ultimate charge. And pay great patience from Cobris there. He was in front of four people with a seismic crash, but he knew that no one was going to be able to follow up, so he held on to I probably would have used it, honestly. <laughs> I just like seeing a bunch of people stunned. He does hold on, he does hold on to it. 
until Wizdude gets there, but Raokeon finds a great shot to pick him off to not let that combination really happen the same way it could have. And now huge aggression, but the Cyclone Strike gets forced a little early. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly the way he would have liked to use that ultimate. Gets almost no value for it, but still buys time. Penguin finally able to outdo him there a bit, a little bit more damage, and they shut down Wizdude. They end up losing Penguin in trade, though, as Betty extends the streak out to 20. Somehow this Genos hasn't died all game yet, and Primey's fan club has a chance now to step in and make this push actually happen, and 50 HP is still standing as Betty in the back line. This has been great Geno's play. And the, all, everyone alive has a mark because of that Chronos 3 coming in. Now one person will lose it because there's four people, but right. still all this damage boost is huge for them. This is where the late game Geno's advantage comes into play. It's been excellent for them so far. The Midnight now coming out as well, and that might slow down the aggression for BFC, but I don't think Office Jet were able to find a whole lot on it. Quaxi ends up falling as moving and aggressively as Wiz do. He finds Penguin there as well. A double kill as he shuts down Ralphion. This could very well be the push. Kresnik, a triple kill. This Koga starting to pay dividends in the late game, and BFC able to get the push. They had a roster that was just so hard to kill once they had their cooldowns up that Koga, you can't pin him down, really. Victor, so far yeah. in the back, it doesn't matter. Genos, super slippery, and then two point tanks with all those defensive cooldowns. Inora Genos maybe struggles at the start with that big cauterized healing differential, but late game, they have the damage boost when the other team only has that healing utility. That's exactly what it felt like, though, right? One of these teams was unkillable, and the other team just did not have enough damage to punch through. That is map number one already taken care of, but plenty more to come after that. the death break it down. Well, it seems like it's just going to be a day of lengthy Frog Isles. This one only goes six points, but still a bit on the longer end there. Brimey's fan club able to pull out the win, thanks in large part, or maybe in no large part, to that Koga there towards the end, grabbing some big kills and converting that one over. Gourmizer, next to me to talk about that one. Does that come down to the uh, to the Koga there at the yeah, end? Yeah, I mean, at the very end, he's definitely sure. what helps. Like, he's the cherry on top that I think continues things going. And it's really weird, because I'm not used to thinking late game Koga made things work. Like, in my right. mind, Koga gets the ball rolling early and then slowly but surely gets dealt with, but 15, five and 14, they didn't really learn how to deal with them. The same thing for the victor. 11 and 2 yep. there for that boy. Complete, Not touched at all. Complete discrepancy, I think, in, in the damage dealers in this one. Raokeon had the most damage in the game and had a decent slash line. But you look at the double-digit kills and single-digit deaths for both of the damage dealers for Brimey's fan club, HP Office Jet Pro, they were just not able to match that same amount of presence. And I think that was, in large part, kind of what helped push them over the edge here as well. I think the front lines, you know, under the duress of an Atlas and the Terminus, they were able to kind of put their stamp on this game. And I think there's something to be said. Penguin had good moments. Penguin had not good moments. And they were interspliced with the fact that without Maeve, that composition doesn't work too well, right? right? You have Atlas who can deal some damage. You have Terminus who can deal some damage. But then you're putting all of the pressure onto the Strix, who's off of the off the point, out of the engagement, not going to matter that much. Maeve just wasn't doing enough of it to make it work, whereas Wizdude showed up when he needed to more often than not able to come through. I mean, a big triple kill at the very end. I think, Grant, you're probably getting two or three of those without him, yep. but you're not getting every single one of them. The fight's not anywhere near as over and definitely not as fast without him there. So he was, again, the icing on the cake that made everything work. What about that reanimate, the 2-2 the two, two point fight? Yeah, it's Mage just Monkey. just Terminus sitting there on his own. We need to have a talk. Go ahead. No. <laughs> no. No. Th there it is. You heard it here first. Don't do that. Reanimate <laughs> with the team around you. I don't know if at the end of the day it makes like a world of difference. They, they <laughs> just, lose that anyway, right? I mean, I know you bring it up because I was like, we're watching it, and I just literally went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was just like, "It was just." Right. I think it was pure about disappointment to time out. and right. out of my voice that comes through, where it's just like, "Do you do, you do it?" I, I I guess it's not. It terrible, was close. It was, it was close to coming back up at the end. Like it was like at ninety eight percent, so nearly was able to save the push anyway. There's no way you can hang the entire game on that one. No. But it, it, it's not. It, not it is by no means a game losing ult. It is just a win bad ult. Sure. Like it, it's not like, oh my god, you threw the whole thing's over because of you. It's just, that was bad. Don't do that. We'll point it out. Sure. There you go. That makes sense to me. Vivian Terminus locked in here. Bright Marsh. It's a map that we're going to head to 
for map number two. And Droxus has Time been impactful on effectively every map all day, and yeah. Bright Marsh, no exception. And I like the way Andrew has been played. I think he's he does a lot. Keep I think a lot of players have been huge on him, and have he's carried over Spirit kind of from the past. A lot of people you remember way Whoa. back in the day, he was your solo carry in ranked. He's the guy that you would come to. He's great for countering off Drogos. Bright Marsh is actually a I pretty decent map for Drogo, so I'm not surprised to see him maybe picked up early. Plus, of just what he brings. Try to keep That's going to be a couple of picks I'm not used to seeing here. Yeah, and I think Maldamba most More than, recently yeah. jumps out at me. Furia taken away. Geno's picked up as well, or banned <laughs> out as well. Ying is kind of that third pick in the healer category, but normally you have Furia or Genos. This time you don't, and you go to the Damba. And I like it. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with Damba. That's, I think, the other, the other odd yeah. thing to point out is just the He's fact good. that he just kind of slithered away because other picks were so good for him. Like, yep. Genos is so good. Furia is so good. Ying's so good that you don't necessarily think, yes, let's lock in the Genos. And, or the ball Damba, sorry. And right. so he's fallen off, but I don't think he's worse for wear. Well, it's game two, Brimey's Fan Club, HP Office Jet Pro Finch, take us in. We'll have our chance to see just where Maldamba stands nowadays as we move on to Bright Marsh here. Not the only one. I feel like we haven't seen that much Ash lately either, as she's been picked up here for this matchup too. But I think both of those champions are examples of people that have just been slightly kind of pushed out a bit. I think they're both perfectly fine. Yeah, they've just been edged out by some of the stronger off tanks and supports. Some teams will prefer Grover, but with Geno's Furia banned and Ying taken on the other side, Depending on what kind of a team style you want, maybe you want Damba again, that targeted healing, more pocket for the term if you think he Let's really needs it. Begin. And the thing about the Ash is, like, I think you just don't want Khan into Vivian. Khan is, Vivian just annihilates Khan. There's no way he can really play in late game. So Ash, a little bit less shield reliant, means she can get away with a lot more aggression even in the face of a bit. Let's take a look then at this very first fight here. The Ash on the left hand side has two members. That she's trying to keep this as the support the Damba and the Vivian able to put under some duress. Finds the dash, and that takes care of at least one. No, that was the ruckus that died elsewhere. Now they also lose Mage Monkey as up start to this fight. It's a triple kill now as Wiz Dude gets a third. What a way to crack open this very first point fight as BFC and win it handily. It's pretty good value from a last pick, I would say, and this double flank composition with an Ash is going to be and that's so Rukian too. Yeah, it's gonna be. This is gonna be such an aggressive composition for Rami's fan club. That, that's what they. That's what they are as a team. They like to pressure, hold these lanes. You can see what Siru was doing on Barrack. Now imagine him on an actually aggressive off tank. Yeah, he'll be able to make some noise happen here. They already have 96%, and there is a one in contesting and actually getting up some percentage of their offense dead. So. It's BFC that need to fight their way back in. Wizdu takes here the Ruckus, who's had a brutal start to this game here so far. Low elf HP bars for Rockin as well. He's been taken out on that Vivian and the rest of the squad now ready to start moving in. Betty trying to keep everybody topped off on this Ying as well, but the Terminus buying a ton of time for the squad. Good job getting back out of there as Betty rejoins up with the rest of the team, but finally ends up falling. It's a double kill for Penguin, but Cool Freeze keeping the fight alive here as the EV buys a little bit of time. Penguin coming in with a triple, triple though, that was massive. It might be a quad if he finds it. Is. It is. Gets rid of the Andy, that completely turns this fight on its head. Ash without ultimate really isn't a, much of a retouch champion that will last a while, and Stop they get aggressive, wow. clean it up. That was super unfortunate there near the end. Betty uses both illusions on points, so she doesn't have an out. Goes in, maybe should have stayed in. Terminus is maybe less dangerous than the outside, but getting stuck back out in front of the Ruckus Eevee. There's so much dive potential in Office Gen. Yeah, this Eevee's on the sixth streak, and every last bit of that just came on that last few bits of the point cap just now. Now Office Gen suddenly have the momentum working together with Rokian. They take down the Androxus as well. Penguin coming to life here on Bright March so far, having an excellent fight and still looking for a bit more help as they've got the rest of the squad here trying to back them up. HP Office have a chance to make a big push happen here. Fishing it takes down one more as the Ash ends up falling too, and they're already well beyond half here on the push. Fishing just read that aggression like a book. Saw Sierra dashing and said, oh, there's no way this isn't an assert dominance play. Fear that out, get that kill immediately, and now everything Primey's fan club wanted is just falling apart. The FC are fully on the retreat now, trying to find a way to keep this going. I say that, but the Ash dash to the back, buries Ralky, and even during the Sentinel, that's a pretty big critical kit that they were able to find. In fact, find the second one, taking out Fishnet on the Maldamba here as well, and Penguin trying to find what pot shots he can as Office Jet's push has finally gotten stalled out. If they had CC'd Siru again out of that, do you think he would have immediately done that off of respawn a third time? Oh, yeah. Do, do you think that he would have just <laughs> dropped down and insta-dashed into where Raukiel was playing? It makes sense. It's what you kind of 
have to do. You get rid of the Vivian, the hold is just a little bit easier, as long as you can keep that Ruckus and Eevee contained on the other side. This is a, I think, a, a pretty solid composition for defending for them. Barrack is going to be good at holding down time, plus both of those flankers can go down and back up to the high ground at any time, letting them kind of select when they fight. And a lot, of, a lot of champions on this map don't really have that same luxury. Penguin having a hard time finding the same space he had earlier on, on in this match, on this EV, but he managed to stay alive throughout that last push, gets sent back, forced to fall all the way back in some trouble, but getting some help from the squad is no longer the main point of focus, so instead starts looking to see if he can cut down one more member of the front line, can't quite get to him, but it's Mage Monkey doing the heavy lifting, taking down two, the front line has all been, been removed, Ruckus gets behind the Androxus, so reversal does him no good, that's the push for Office Jet as they open this one up 2-0. They did commit a little bit though. Hexafire and Ice Storm used Ice Storm used to catch up the barrack. Hexa used to burn down the dome shield basically to try to make CB as oh. uncomfortable as possible. This was this was a crazy sequence what by Penguin. Sequence, and then yeah. following it up with a with a mid-air direct onto an ulting Androxis. I mean, you can't ask for more from your EV player. You absolutely cannot, man. Penguin showed up for them like the Avatar where the world needed him most, right? It was excellent. <laughs> and from it came him. out of the ice block. It absolutely did, Boys didn't he? And and, and and the thing seconds. was they really should have lost that initial cap. If you're oh, on yeah. the side, of, of BFC, you've got to be feeling kind of brutal because that initial point fight was so in their favor. Yeah, and it's it's so hard in some of these chaotic Five, fights to keep track four, of spawn timers. Three, if, you, sure. if you lose that, if you One. don't pay attention to it for a moment, then someone coming back can just completely catch you by surprise. Penguin, they weren't paying attention to his respawn. He came back in, and you need to know where an Eevee is basically all the time to either play your distance or catch her out before she can use warm up. Up top is immediately met with some aggression. Uses the opportunity though to take to the sky and fall back, trying to win the duel against the Adroxis. Tries to avoid the accursed arm, but Koga's waiting for him the second that she comes back out. Penguin survives the onslaught though as Ralkian finds one, gets traded out. They lose Penguin as well, so Office Jet get up a big percent lead with 66, but they've lost the fight for now. Probably need to start falling back as they lose Mage Monkey here as well. And they might, he might actually have to revive here to have a chance to retake. Depends on their spawns, I guess. And they do have Ruckus, so there is a chance. But he's the latest spawner, and he's the one they want to touch the point the most. They're going to have to throw away someone that they want to have for the post fight to be able to start this overtime. Well, this is exactly how the last fight went. So I guess next thing up is a near penta kill for, for Penguin here at this point. Avoids the ultimate coming out from Koga. Wiz dude has to start falling back. Terminus has made his way into the point room, but hasn't actually quite got the touch he was looking for. In comes Penguin right to the back line. They start looking for even more damage, and he wants Betty. He wants this Yang removed from the equation, but it cost him his life to get it done. This fight's still favoring Brimey's fan club, though, at least for now. Getting that trade is actually huge for Betty there in the back line, but wow. they don't go for the point. They're too worried, trying to get passive healing, and there's no way they can keep it up. So they're trying to disengage Kwashi in their spawn. Actually, spawn camping, they have to get him, but able to have an illusion up top to teleport back Enemy into the spree. spawn room. And they stabilize, but 3-0 right now. They need to find an answer, honestly, to this dive pressure right now. They're just making him look away from the Vivian too much. It just looked like such a good fight for them on that midpoint, didn't it? But they weren't able to get back and actually maintain control of the point. And just like that, Office Jet now in control 3-0. Going to make life really difficult for BFC if they want to find this defense. Not many shots coming out from the Androxes for now, who instead will fall back. But this is all about keeping Office Jet pushed back. Yeah, actually, they don't even have a way to stop them, really, on the pit side. Don't nice Shield shot. gets forced out by the Ice Storm, and they're Hexafire to counter it again. Mage Monkey has been taken out here earlier on. The Ruck is trying to see if he can slow them down, but the Andro sticking to him like glue and finding plenty of shots. Whose job is to get him off it? Finally, Fish and Penguin provide some much necessary damage to take him out of the equation. The Ruck has to come back to Earth. This Ash, kind of the only one frontlining for the team for now, and she's starting to melt as well as Penguin finds himself a double, getting rid of Wiz Dude as well and off the check can start to make their push. And actually, Betty's caught out in the back, and she might have been able to hide, but Ying decided to go sing with me, sisters, in the back, <laughs> and they knew exactly where she was. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's just be like that sometimes, yeah. when you, your character decides to give you away, but no healing for a while, but they don't want to contest at this point anyway, I think. You don't want to give yourself a potential snowball for the cards to roll straight in. Brimeys has a few ultimates they can use to make this work. A Cursed Arm, Cyclone Strike, but it looks like Ash is going to be the initiator. Already moving in aggressively. We should see that they've given up a good deal of that high ground. We like to talk about if they hold it or if they want to step out and take the fight. And they want to step out right looking for the EV as Wizdu Wiz tries to lock him down. Can't get the kill. Now the return fire is coming his way, but Cool Freeze has taken care of Mage Monkey here earlier. They've lost Penguin now as well as the Koga's still standing. So this should be a decent defense now for BFC. I think the tanks on BFC have... Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Before, Hold that thought. There's no way, right? 
There's no way that this actually happens. But they don't they know don't that he's know. here. He's just going to come back they, know. they just pushing. turned around. See, he, he's seeing the damage numbers, so they know. But this is going to pull them all back. And right. that's going to open up things for Penguin so much. You could already see he's taking that tree positioning. And they're completely sandwiched. This is a big play for them now. They're stuck in between. Fishnick gets the first one. Wiz dude does shut down Penguin, but not before Ruckus takes care of the Androxes from the equation as well. What a huge play from the Ruckus to stay behind enemy lines. Not quite, though, able to make that push work. BFC handle it and end up finding the defense. They just didn't have anyone ready to retouch after Quashi went down, but good attempt at a play. It was it was so close. It was exactly what they needed, but they just couldn't move fast enough after wiping to make it to the objective. But back on the initial point, I think the tanks on BFC have been so good at making space. They, they haven't been preserving their lives at all in these fights, but they don't need to with the style that they want to play. They have two yeah. flankers. They just have to go in and absorb as much damage as possible down. while they get pocketed by Betty to allow WizDude and Silver to do whatever they want. And Saruch has really done such a good job of that on that Ash in particular. Really, they both have cool breeze as well. Five, but in particular, four, the Ash has been that three, problem drawing so two, much extra focus and one. attention. You can't, you don't feel like you can commit as much as it takes to kill the Ash because you're taking so much damage from the Andro and the Koga in the same time period. So he's buying time for the squad in a big way. And if you're not ready, you can't you just can't body block his out. He just yeah. gets out for free and then you just wasted all that time. Getting far in on the mountain too with the assert dominance, but he's gonna save it to quick cancel on the back line. And goes right in the same way he's done all game long. The Adamba has become his target, already has him well below half HP, but always elusive is the Damba making his way back out of there. Fishnet actually finishes up the kill on full breeze. Rockian and Penguin find one too. The kill feed lighting up now for Office Jet. And they could potentially just run away with this match now, and I think they will. There's no one here to even get a touch. That was quick. Yeah, they just couldn't CB couldn't live on the point, so all this cap time is here. I don't know if they have a chance at all. CB's dash isn't long enough, especially with an Eevee in the way, and HP Office Jet Pro 6978 wireless all-in-one <laughs> instant and gritty printer. <laughs> Take the first map of the set. Man, I really like to break down that last fight, but I literally blinked and missed it. Was not <laughs> expecting for that one to go by quite that quickly, but it was a storm of kills coming in for Office Jet. How they win that one so handily? I think it was a little bit on Siri for not dropping. He he ulted with a cert dominance onto the high ground. Could have yeah. chased Fishnet out, but stayed on the invincibility instead of chasing the frag, and that could have been a difference maker. They're able, able to take care of that Maldamba or at least get something out of that trade. So Office Jet do manage to come in and find game number two, but plenty more coming. Let's have the desk break down what we just saw. Well, one more time today, we find ourselves all tied up as HP Office Jet Pro are able to take this one on Bright Marsh. More convincing than some of the other matches we've seen today. This one goes 4-1, only thanks to a defense from Brimey's Fan Club, but a win nonetheless for HP Office Jet Pro. Convincing from them, I think that's what we expected this roster yeah. to do in, in game one. Took them a minute. But in game two, they show their stuff. Also, for all the like seven point Bright Marsh maps that we saw today, that's yeah. that's what you're looking for when you go to Bright Marsh. They almost four out it. I actually really love the mm -hmm. the wherewithal to stay behind as the ruckus in that moment. If there that had been uh, just a few more seconds in the game where that potentially has some resets, some turrets that are placed much further up in the map. He gets away with that, 100%. Most backdoors don't get caught out by turrets, but in that case, the turrets were the most helpful thing in the game. And we briefly touched on, you sort of mentioned, yeah, some champions I'm not used to seeing. We kind of pivoted the conversation to the Maldamba. I haven't seen a whole lot of Ash either. No, and she did wonderfully so far. I mean, maybe not enough to completely curve the game back in their favor. <laughs> right. But I like where Ash sits. I think she can bring a lot to the table. I don't know how much she's going to bring next to Barrick of all things and, oh, and less against or with Barrick as much as it is against that comp. I don't know where she's looking to, to go forward with it other than, hey, her ult's really good in that instance, but she didn't have enough lockdown, wasn't able to, to follow up on specifically Eevee more than anything. I didn't right. see her doing a whole lot against the Vivian. So it was less that she was bad and more that she didn't have a home. Sure. And I liked what I saw out of the Eevee as well. I mean, so many of the highlights we, we just looked at were from Penguin. And I think that, you know, Eevee is, I wouldn't say a back seat, but a side seat to some of the other champions that have started to move themselves into the meta. So I'm, I'm happy on Bright Marsh, where however many months ago you would have had her in that conversation of somebody, you know, you pick uh, kind of right off the bat. So I like seeing HP Office Jet Pro moving towards that Eevee and, and finding some good success. So hats off to Penguin for a good performance there. And that gets them right back into it. And Jaguar Falls, map number three. We move towards picks and bans. Gormizer, Jag Falls opened so many different meta options. I think Terminus still comes to mind here. Yeah. 
Moji is, a, I think, a player specific pick, though. Just, I mean, it's, it's, ma too. it's map specific, but team specific. I don't think she's necessarily just a plug and play on Jaguar Falls. My mind skips over Moji. Like, she's available. She becomes, like, an option, but I don't think she's, like, my go to. You are not right. welcome I immediately here. think of Bomb King, I think mm -hmm. of Zen. And like you said, like Terminus comes to my mind. And Nara and Barrack are very, very big here. And the fact that one of them gets picked up, I wouldn't be surprised to see the other at some point in the draft just because of how friends. strong they can be. And then you start seeing less Ruckus, more Vivian, just because she does the Ruckus thing, but more damage. Well, you nailed the Terminus. You've, you've nailed the Zin now. Barrack is going to round out the front line for BFC. That is a, a massive health pool that they've got. They've got themselves the Inara and the Barrack. Uh, no healers picked up, no healers banned out, but if you get some big splash healing, that's going to be a tough front line to kill. Bring it out the I'm not bases. sure. I guess I like, you know, with the Ruckus in there as well, it's kind of like a triple DPS-ish meta. Or Two and a half. Tick, yeah, team comp I will bring for HP off his jet. Darkness. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. I mean, that's a, he a really heavy focus on hit scan. Yep. Not a lot of blast damage. I would love to see Ooh. Koga flash him out of there for a Bomb King and to be perfectly fine. And I would love this more than anything. Yeah, I, I miss Amani. She, she's I just such a she's fun so kit. Fun. Such yeah. a fun kit. And we saw her a whole lot right yeah, when she was yes! released. Haven't seen her much. Yes. But you're going to see her here again, and Gore's excited about it. Yes. I love her. And again... I don't get to say this often, but this is a bulldozer game for HP Office Jet. I mean, there you go. you've got Anara Wall plus her Warder's Field plus Barrack Turrets plus a Mani Dragon. Like, that's four things that I've just counted off, and that might not even be diving too deep into it. But I love what she brings. I love the swap stance. I'm interested to see how she's played. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how this Amani plays out in game number three. Let's move into it. The Amani, who we don't get to see that much of on Jaguar Falls of all places. And Kresnik, I feel like it's kind of my job here to get out of the way and let me tell you about this. Um, let you tell me about this Amani no, figure. No, 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 you, you yeah, said it. Yeah, you, you tell know, like me I about said, it. Yeah, I'll talk about it. Let me break this down here for you guys. No, please, Kresnik, bail me out. I, I desperately. I think they're running in for anti-aggro, which is why they're going to be playing Splitting Ice. If they shoot one person in a group that's diving them, it's going to hit both. Plus, always being on ice stance means you're focusing a little bit on that Frost Bomb. You should always have it available. That big AoE root will also stop any aggression coming in from that side. Let dragon is also great for zoning. Her ultimate, just hold a dragon in the sky over wherever they want to go through and literally kill anything as, as long as they don't have the angles to take it. We'll see how this Amani will pan out throughout the entirety here of this game. It's the Terminus and the Inara battling it out on the point, but already Dilrin has run into this Zen and has to be careful. Plenty of damage coming out as well from Kwashi on this Ruckus, who had an excellent game last time, was looking for the big flank play, but couldn't quite find it. So off this jet. Now gonna see if they can lock this one down. They've got plenty of percentage to talk about already at 70, and I don't know if BFC can find their way in. Penguin rotates in, puts the Amani down, won't even get a chance to see what she's capable of. She falls very early on in this fight, and someone's gotta find a point touch here. 93% already in favor of Office Jet. In comes the Inara, cool breeze, trying to even keep this game going, but the overtime now starting to tick down. The Void Grip stops the Barrack from making it in. He falls as well. Office Jet have had firm control over this fight so far. What change in focus. Zero came in, immediately was siphoned, and went from full to dead in an instant. That's great priority from them, and great priority again as two more people fall. Yeah, that's Rockin that finds the double kill. Penguin finds one, too, and the Amani has gotten to do exactly zero here so far as she's been relegated to the bench. A handling by Office did in this first fight. They capture the point, and already they've sent Kwashi up forward to try and get aggressive on the Ruckus. The way that they draft their compositions on Primey's fan club is it's going to be tough to run a backline that needs any, any love from their healer, basically. Double point tank. Both going to want to take at least a little bit. So anytime that Zyoran gets pressured, it's going to be Betty's going to have to change her focus and then the tanks might suffer because they're trying to make so much room. But a great random beam from the Fury actually catches that route yet and that opens up the fight. That is huge. They can now start pushing forward. Wizard Dude should be able to do quite a bit of work too. The Inflame now committed and they find two kills to cut off the aggression from off this jet at the root. The Terminus getting caught to a full on wipe except for this Vivian and VFC have slowed the aggression here at this point. Are you surprised that it's gone this way or is it about how you expect? 
I, I think it's not too surprising to see them holding there because they really can't get flanked near the Jaguar Falls capture point. They can't really get pressured from the side, so they have enough angles to play around. Look at this pressure from the side by Kubris, actually, but the Seismic Crash connects on no one. The Penguin is able to find the first kill of this engage with the numbers now favoring Office Jet. Here's the second one as Penguin is hard to stop. Betty falling on the Furia here, this time getting cut down the size quite well. So Koga's just going to head to the back line. Penguin wants to see if he can find a bit more, gets that high ground for free and should be able to put out some relevant shots. But the Amani was still in the back end of falling too. A quick turnaround from Penguin. And now it's a full on push from Office Jet. I love that play. I love the Frostfire glide into the Inferno Cannon. You don't do it 1v4. You, you wait till your team <laughs> is pressuring at least a little bit. Love the attempt, but now it's a 5v4 to hold the point. It's going to be difficult for Leonardo doing all the heavy lifting for now. And the Terminus trying to push everybody off the point. There's a low HP bar in the back, and that was Wiz Dude falling on the Zen. They do get one kill into the rocket, but Ralkin has found himself a double. Maybe get a triple kill as Cool Breeze falls as well. A cool Hadra is off his jet. Punch it in. 2-0 to start it off. No surfing allowed, says Ralkian, holding Not on here. that objective. Quadra for Vivian, and that's this is such a good map for her. This is such a good meta for her in general, I feel. She's just... Constantly putting out damage is stressing out the healers a lot. Yeah. And you need to do that with the cauterized nerfs. Some of the healers got nerfed, as we know, to kind of keep up with it. But when she applies all that pressure, it just makes it so much harder for the healers to keep the team alive. And I understand when you're pushing forward and you're zoning and you're trying to set up for a better defense Points later on. But that seems like a pretty good example of how not to do it. They end up yeah. staggered on the way back out. They never got set up on an actual defense in front of the payload and One, just two, got run over. Now, of course, the Vivian five, is able to find the four, quadra kill there because they're three, walking into the wood two, chipper one by one. Yeah, and that's because they tried to zone a side angle. They all right. pushed up on the right side, and then uh, HP Office Jet just said, oh, let's just go this way. Let's just take the <laughs> only way they're not watching, and they got in for free. Get the delayed kill into the Amani, who has found, I'm pretty sure, close to zero value here so far. It just has not been the early game that I think the Amani has been looking for. Oh, there, there you go, Valley. Good point. As this next fight around the midpoint is already kicking off Office Jet, enjoy the 36% advantage so far, and Terminus done a great job locking down this point, please. Or rather, Ruck is going to come in for yet another one of these flanks, but this time he ends up getting caught out. Plenty of damage, though, he's able to put off, and already 66% earned by Office Jet. Tough when you're having double point tank and neither of them can stand on the objective against the Terminus, but Sinflame might change things. Fish then able to come in and find one nice Void Crypt, but there is not a ton of follow up on the back of that. Hexafire committed. I don't know if he found quite the damage that he was looking for there. It's actually Betty that gets the first kill in the Mage Monkey, and Mage Monkey commits. The reanimate ends up falling for it, but Penguin gets the back line through time and space does not find much. Though I love the idea as Penguin gets rid of the Fury. Huge Cyclo Strike actually gets walled up by Cool Breeze. He tried to block it off, but you don't know where Koga is in the middle of that. That was massive by Penguin there in the back line. And Koga is such a good character at staying alive, pressuring your back. And it's going to be splitting Betty's focus so much on this Furia when all of those heal all those heals have to go with the tanks with how aggressive they're playing. It's so it's been so difficult for her all game long to find the target to actually heal. What a time to take a breath though, right when that fight came through, huh? Unfortunately, as Ralkin gets yet another one, puts Wiz Dude into the dirt with those shots from long range. This Vivian has not been answered here so far. Has another decent positioning with the Sentinel. He takes down the Barrack as well. They get the kill into the Fury, and I don't know if this defense is ever even going to materialize his office just start to run right through him. They have to have the, the Zin pressure this Vivian, but he can't do it alone. No. Vivian will just win that duel, especially with the boost from Opportunity and Chaos. Just controlling so much space, the card's turning the final corner, and I don't know how Grimey's gonna break this. Yeah, I can't wait to take a look at these Vivian damage numbers at the end of this one, because Ralkian is having a game for himself. Another double kill, and now the Inara falls into the line of fire. The Ruckus all the way in the back line to keep this fight staggered. Betty has now dropped as well, like a ton of bricks. The Amani can't even make it off the ground. A godlike performance for Ralkian as he just wreaks havoc. That's it. That's the whole set. Get him out of here. They never stood a chance. That was Bluin's tower defense, and he was a super monkey. Yeah. There was, he was just <laughs> unstoppable. Where was the movie? They had nothing, right? Yeah, there was nothing. <laughs> nothing not even, to come no stop one that. to slow them down. Yeah. But no, it was crazy. They could not stop him at all. The Zin had to do it alone because of that double point tank. They need to find a different tank composition against that character. They need something if they're going to make that one work. Run over quickly. Hopefully, the desk got some water or something because they are right back needed. Go ahead and break that one down for me, fellas. Yeah, I, I stood up and then immediately sat down in the five minutes that it took me to stand up. And that one uh, completely blown out of the water. It's Brimey's fan club here. Gormizer, it turns out that leaving a Vivian unchecked isn't good. Yeah, that's that That was that game. That was just the showcase. Ralkion is really good <laughs> at Vivian is one thing. 17 and 1, by the way. 
Yeah. I'm just let that one sit for a little bit. The next highest, the next best was eight and one, which was Penguin. So still on his team, 71,000. Oh what do God. I see? 45,000. Do we have anything higher? Nope. So they are top two, and then you drop down into the 30s. So solid control, I think, is the easiest statement of my life to be able to say for HP Office Jet Pro. Raukeon just shattered people. I mean, there was nothing you could do. A quadra kill right here. What is it with quads today? Uh, you know what? I hey, think I've seen more quads today. It's the day to bring it, dude. That's true. I guess if there's any day to start throwing out some quads, it's when you're trying to qualify in the split number one of the PPC. And needless to say, HP Office Jet Pro, they fall in, in map number one, and it's close, but they do fall. And since then, they have made it more and more convincing. Now take a 2-1 lead here in this set. And it's not all Raukeon. This massive play, he, he yeah. went up on the wall and then drops back down and returns enough damage to win his team. That you fight. know, well, coming into that, I was really, really wanting to see some great Amani plays. I had, like, a lot yeah, of Yeah, right. <laughs> the ult was never used once. Yeah, I didn't and see a dragon. I don't blame them. But there's a certain point, at least in my mind, where I'm like, you know what? I'm losing this fight. Like, let's get the dragon out here. Let's see right. if the dragon has something to say about this. Unfortunately, no. there was just never really a position to use it. There was never a position for her to, to show off anything because, yeah, I mean, you had no front line to work behind. And you know what's sad is that now we've seen Imani. And, and she's got a 0% It didn't work at all. And now people are going to be scared to pick her again, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see if maybe in game yeah. number four somebody's going to be excited to pick up. Amani, I'm not sure. It's Stone Keep this time around. So, map actually, where we have seen Amani, I don't expect to see her at all. No. Rom, though, banned out here. Bomb we got King, our one and done. okay. Bomb King banned out. Uh, Vivian, yep, she takes a seat as well. I was uh, that was two for two there right before, and I couldn't predict the last couple. But Torvald, needless to say, taken away as well. Another map where previously we maybe have seen more Maves and Eevees, and Stepping we've seen a couple the of them here today. But I don't know if. In the current meta, there are better yeah. options. Maybe. I'm wondering if snipers are going to play the role that they today? typically play because this has been a map where some teams are like yeah. they hang on to it. Victor, I do. Uh, Victor, though, with Vivian gone, comes to my mind almost immediately as like, yes, we would like him. I don't Tell care which team, someone wants him. And they go back to the Koga, and I mean, hey, it worked really Your well for you last game. Hurt. I can't think of a reason it will be bad for you here. Yep. The change of map will be something to overcome, but if you fight for keep, you can drop down mm -hmm. on the objective, mm -hmm. or it's close quarters enough for you to just work well in there. Well, first three picks are, are well-rounded for BFC here for sure. I think Androxus has proven that he belongs in, in that, that pick What's conversation more? here in this meta time and time again, and Terminus continuing to be a frontline priority as well. So you're pairing Khan and, and this Terminus together Bring as your front line. What do you think about guns. that? I like it. I yeah. think Khan works well on this map. Granted, overpower in my mind almost always translate to the, yes, we're looking for an individual, like, this is going to kill you. Sure. And there's not a necessarily, like, large kill field on this map, except Ooh. off of the map, which yeah. isn't around the objective. But with the Koga kind of next to him, with whatever they lock in here, which, again, I'm still feeling a victor, comes through, it will be a lot to be able to keep them... <laughs> Under duress, kill him off, oh, wow. cause no trouble. I like the sure. EV2. Well, she's been banned out more than she's been picked out here. I guess that's not all that surprising. 8% pick rate, but 100% win rate through those games. So that one's going to be put to the test here. I, I think an EV, that rounds out this composition pretty well. HP Office Jet Pro, they're going to look to clean up this set in game number four. I didn't realize EV had 100% win rate. I guess we can just go ahead and wrap this one up, right? This is going to yeah. be a guaranteed... <laughs> that's that's work, right? Yeah, that is exactly how they work. Well, let's move on to Stone Keep. Office Jet has set a blistering pace throughout games number two and three. So if I'm on the side of BFC, man, you got to figure out some kind of way to slow down this squad because right now they are taking whatever it is that they want. I think HP have to kind of play this composition slow. I don't know it's weird to say that with double tank, but with double flank, excuse me, but they can't really pounce on top of anything. The Their tanks aren't really begun. super aggressive, super fast. I think they're going to wait on this side and try to find someone to target, but looks like they actually just want to meet them inside keep, and Rimey's just the team that's wrapping around them. They've already grabbed the top position and pushed two members back of BFC. In fact, they're going to move right on in and try and keep this Cassie out of the fight. Ralkian has taken down Cool Breeze early on as well, so 
Perhaps the slower pace not happening, at least <laughs> just yet, huh? Because off this jet ran over them right away. They're going to try and lock down the Ruckus on the left-hand side, too. Rocky and just kind of buying some time here on this Koga as he's taking a lot of damage already. But look how far back BFC have been put. Off this jet control all the space in the middle of the map. While Penguin's also just harassing this side, making it a lot oh. harder for them to push in. He actually gets away from that. That's insane. And they have such good positioning on the church side now. I thought that Penguin was dead to right there as well. They lose Cool Breeze yet again. Androxus finally finds a kill here from Wizdude to take down Fishnut. In fact, he finally gets a double, takes down Penguin as well. This could finally be the turning point they need to slow this around. But look at the percentage, even with those kills from Wizdude. Off his jet are controlling the center of the point. Betty has now fallen as well, and that's it. Overtime done off his jet. Stop have Halo. captured the first pay point. Escort I love that Halo. start from HP Office Jet. The fact that they pushed in on the right side, caught them without using dashes. I just think that Brimies wasn't ready for the aggression through keep. They were probably they thinking the no. same thing I was, honestly. <laughs> and then as soon as the Khan got there, they just didn't think, oh, he would never dash into us. Why Why would he ever do that? And then he immediately did it, immediately got a stun and zoned out the Cassie, so there was no real answer to it. And it just snowballed from there. They just played that 5v4 perfectly. Well, BFC were my fan. They were me in that moment. They kept giving up so much <laughs> ground. They're like, how could you want more from us at this point? And he continued to chase relentlessly. They're now over halfway pushed with this payload with a little under two minutes to work with. And in great positioning, three ultimates available. The Inflame almost there too, as the Ruck has taken a ton of damage here on the left-hand side. But here comes a big ultimate from the Genos. Doesn't end up finding nearly as much as it looks like that it might. This Ruckus has to be careful as his HP continues to get shipped away. But Fishnet on the Fury has been dropped. That's a huge pick that they've been able to find now without their healing. Oh my god, Wiz dude! What happened there? Finds another kill, gets a kill with a reversal onto Penguin. He tries to get away just to buy more time, and maybe they don't get this trade. They do. Ralkion does keep it even. I want to say that Ruckus, Siruchan, did a great job surviving there. He was in an ice storm getting shot by two people and yeah. just does not go down. He plays the corner perfectly, and the other side of the map is completely locked down by Cool Breeze, so they can't peek it. This is kind of the Wiz Dude show right now, though. They're relying on him to do yes. so much on the side of Rhymes. You're exactly right. He's kind of the only one that kept them alive. I think he got their only kills in the initial point fight, too, or at least the, ma the vast majority of them, and kept them in it. So now they're back to the initial choke point with this con up top, trying to see if we can find a way to push through and maybe find a pull onto a priority target. Meanwhile, Fishnet way in the back, keeping everybody topped up. He's got that in flame ready to go as the accursed arm comes in, but that's all committed onto the con, and he finds nothing. Wiz Dude ends up falling. They do at the very least get the kill back onto him, but as we said, Wiz Dude's been all their offense. Yeah, and Zero trying to equalize it, but he live. barely survives the Burning Oath card in the Fury build. Gives you healing every time you heal somebody, and that was just enough to keep Fishnet alive. Penguin gonna try and take to the high ground to find some kills, but thinks better of that, has to fall back as well. They've been relatively stalled here, and I see that's why we're seeing the Khan start to push forward to try and break this open finally, as the defense proving stalwart from BFC. The Ruckus trying to move into the back line. Everyone turns towards him instantly, and he melts. No chance, he's able to stay alive there. Search and grabs one and throws him back to the rest of the squad for yet another kill as Fishnet has the double. Another successful push as Office Jet just can't be stopped. Yeah, they're, so, they're gonna be so hard to deal with, I think, with the aggression that they have. I know that Brimies is a team that likes to play very aggressive. They like to send their tanks in, they like to follow up on it. I just don't know if they're ready for this kind of gameplay. It hasn't at, seemed that way, At this huh? pace, I think that's really what's catching them off guard. They're so used to being the aggressors in the practice that now that they're playing as a team that just says, yeah, yeah, we go. <laughs> we, we go in. We go, and we go pretty darn well huh? up until this point. I mean, Boys it has been stifling seconds. for BFC to try and deal with. And that's sort of the point I think that you're making, right? I imagine that these guys are thinking the same thing we are. How do we step back and get out from underneath all this pressure? But it's coming from so Five, many areas four, that there is no way for them to fight three, back through. Two, the real answer, I think, has one. to be just find where they're pushing, or like play a little slow, see where they're pushing, and immediately tell whatever the other side of the map is to shove. You right. have to punch them where they're not ready for it. Like, not fighting in keep like they're doing now. They shouldn't be matching them like this. They're heading right back over to keep for a rerun of the fight that happened last time. The ultimate from Betty doesn't find much this time from the Genos on the opposite side. And that might give Credence for office yet to move in. But Wizdude, as he's done all game, is kind of the only shining light. He takes care of Penguin and gets this EV out of here. Though I don't know if Penguin's really been that big of the problem. Wizdude gets a second, taking care of Fishnet as well. This is finally the fight that BFC need as they're opening up this mid-fight. Wizdude 
actually was the person punching on the side that time. I thought they were all stacking in front, but Wiz must have been waiting over on the side of Church as soon as as soon as HP tried to push across the high ground and claim that territory. Dash is straight up, hits them on the side. They're not ready for it. That's what they have to keep doing, punch those weak spots. I don't know if Officer are even going to be able to find their way in for even one touch. The point overtime. being captured so quickly. I think the Terminus just barely made in time to start the overtime, but now the overtime has been removed as, great, as Mage Monkey has fallen. He's right back up, though. Penguin here as well takes down the Ruckus to buy his team some space. They got 99%, but Office Jet has fought right back in. They're holding this very well. Betty goes down to Penguin. Both of these people here. Rimes is having good control now with Yolder, but they're giving up the point. Cassie is able to find Nash Shot. So is Wizard on this Androxus. Another double kill now for the Cassie as they open things back up. It's just the Terminus left on the point to try and find some time. The Scout comes out as well, so they know if anyone else is on their way. Overtime starting to drop. The Koga comes in to keep it extended and by a little bit of time, but it's not enough. BFC cap the objective. He focuses on the frags instead of saving the objective. He could have used Cyclone Strike and bought even more time, but right now, HP has to find an answer for Wizdu, who is yes. literally just doing almost everything. Silver had a great play at the end there, but finally they pick him off, and they have to be able to control this, and Drox is so strong right now in this meta. Yeah, the play that Cassie's made is done by the space afforded to her by Wizdu, right? So. 100% got to agree with you on that one. Nice pull by the Khan to bring Betty all the way to the back. They're going to intentionally delay the kill onto this Genos. Well done there to try and deny them their healer for as long as possible. And that's going to mean that, B that, that BFC have to fully kind of fall back now before they can make any sort of push. Yeah, but look at the pressure that HP Office Jet is, is kind of exuding right now where they're holding. They have two in Banana, two in Main, and they have to go through one of these choke points to make something happen. Koga also spamming for the dismounts. It's very free in the same exact way the first mid started. We might see another pick. You said they had to pick between the choke points. Well, perhaps they picked wrong as the Khan was waiting for them here on the right-hand side. Betty ends up falling, as does the Cassie. A huge wipe coming through in favor of Office Jet to further deny them. I don't know if Lance fans are going to get much out of this push at all. I actually hope they don't chase CB any further because that would be giving up the positioning they had, which was super dominant. Good point. Penguin rotates away, and now he's going to be holding over there, not supporting in main, but it's Eevee. It's mobile enough, and they want to get aggressive. Rockin has stepped all the way up. This Koga pumping in the damage, able to get through some of it to the Androxes, but now threatening the Ruckus, who just barely survived the HP. But someone's got to help this. Genos doesn't even get the ultimate off in time as Rockin buries her. Nowhere for her to go. The Androxes gets thrown to reversal by some time, but the Koga dashes right on through. Can't quite clean up the kill, so Mage Monkey's there for the double as they take down Cool Breeze and Wiz, dude. This is all happening after they lost the midpoint, or, or, or Kresnik. Betty has been on the cusp of hitting the sickest Geno Assaults two lives in a right row. Right there, right? Right there, <laughs> so close, but the damage from Rakyon and Koga is just too much. They're going to have it for the for the mid fight at least at this point, which could be good paired with something else. No real combos, but they can use Scout to see it, maybe. I mean, I almost wonder if you kind of give up on this push at this point. It's so much work that they'd have to do essentially the length of the map in overtime. They might just be better off holding onto these ultimates as Fishnet it gets the kill onto the Ruckus to push them back even further. A dominant defense here so far from Office Jet. And that should push them up to three. But the Accursed Arms coming out. Maybe I'm wrong. They want to try and put out some resources after all to grab this defense. But no way that's going to happen. Office Jet make the defense successful. I was worried that it was a fat finger at first because I saw him holding on to the charges, but he fired one and then canceled it. So no ultimate for Wizdude at the start of this, but with what he's doing, I mean, he should yeah. charge it up over a time during it. I wouldn't be shocked if they did. And I don't think Quashi is, I think he's only connected that one con ult onto Betty a little bit earlier. Yeah. They're, if they want to have an easier time on this fight, they definitely need to get that. They'll charge it pretty soon. They do have a couple combos. They can even drop their flank seconds. ultimates at the same time. That Ice Storm on top of a Cyclone Strike denied yeah. any way to escape. They have a lot of chances to execute. They just got to find out how. And they got to find a way to get through them. I'm thinking that Wiz Five, Dude's priority four, number one, and then three, maybe Betty right two, behind that one. But if you can one. take this Androxus out on the side of Office Jet, then they're probably going to have a relatively easy fight. All the rest of them have been clean for them so far. They are going to head into the keep one more time on this right side, see if they can win that battle through time and space again. Doesn't end up finding much, so they drop the Inflame, see if they can turn this fight on its head. The Eevee under pressure, and Wiz Dude will lose the battle. He falls first. Penguin got the backup he needs and they take the Androxus out. It's full on retreat now from BFC. Oh, and the Dome Shield used in retreat too because they don't want to get staggered. I'm not sure if that's what they need. It did force out the Ice Storm, but 
honestly, now they don't have really many great ways to retake the point. Every single ultimate got spent and countered. They're still sitting on the on the reanimate as well for the term, and is still sitting on the ultimate for Khan as well. If they need something to try and turn these fights around, and it's brute force on these right hand side, and not gonna let that happen. The Khan just charges right on in, puts the Cassie down. 51% now for Office Jet as three come through in the kill feed for their side. They can test it for a while, but it's only Betty and Cool Breeze alive. I don't know if they have a way to touch, especially with this flank pressure on the back right now. It doesn't seem that like they do so far. 84% and climbing. Cool Breeze does get one kill on Duralki, but the entirety of the team is pushed back. They won't even get a touch. And Office Jet grab the victory to put this set to bed. They changed their focus pretty effectively, I think. They found Wizard on the final mid. He couldn't come yeah. in and pinch. And that was kind of what they were relying on. So immediately through time and space comes out. But they're ready. They, they know exactly what Brimies was going to try to do. And you're right, man. That fight was so critical. It initially looked like he actually had a good chance to win the 1v1 up against Penguin. But gets a little bit of credit. We talked about just about everyone, I feel like, there. Except for this con performance. What a game from him. Especially on that last fight. He was an absolute monster, man. Yeah, the sucker punch at the very end. Yeah, to get that nasty. kill with the grab. <laughs> He made a lot of room for them and always set up kills for Ralkion, who had a great performance too. 89,000 damage on that Koga. Just being almost unpunishable with, with the team support that he had around him. And I don't want to take anything away from Office Jet, but I do think they were largely favored coming into the match here, right? To be able so. to win up against BFC. And after that very first set, what looked like a bit of an upset, they still managed to, hard, to, to stay fast and, and grab that win. We've got one more set left here in North America to find out who's going to make it into the group stages. Give us a quick break, and we'll be right back.